Netanyahu again doubled down today saying they would not leave the Philadelphia corridor. How do you expect to bridge the gap on this given his continued insistence that Israeli forces will So there? what I'm not going to do is negotiate in public uh, on uh, this question. Uh, I will just reiterate what we have said before, which is the, the government of Israel from the prime minister on down has accept, have accepted the proposal put forward by the president and the bridging proposal, which included the withdrawal of Israeli forces from densely populated areas throughout Gaza, the Gaza Strip. And what we are working on uh, every hour of the day is trying to figure out how we can bridge these remaining divides and find a way to get a ceasefire agreement over the line. But as you heard me say yesterday, that is going to require flexibility uh, from the government of Israel, just as it's going to pro uh, uh, require Hamas to finally find a, re uh, a way to get to yes. And so we're going to continue to engage with the government of Israel on this question. Um, we recognize the very real security needs that Israel has to ensuring uh, that there can't be smuggling across the Philadelphia quarter. We think that there are ways to address it, that. And it's uh, also important that we recognize the re very real security imperatives to Israel in reaching a ceasefire that allows us to hopefully reach a diplomatic resolution to the situation on the uh, Israeli Lebanon border and hopefully uh, helps us calm broader regional tensions, all of which are a threat to Israel's security. And so I bring all that up just because oftentimes this discussion uh, gets focused on this one particular threat to Israel's security, which is the potential for smuggling across the Philadelphia, court, Philadelphia quarter, which we think is important to address. But it shouldn't be discussed in absence of all the other improvements to Israel's security that we believe a ceasefire agreement would bring about. What makes you think we'll show any flexibility, though, given that Netanyahu again and again and again insists that there will be a presence in the Philadelphia Corps? Well, that is the point of negotiations. Uh, and and that, is the, that is why we are engaged in these negotiations with uh, uh, Israel and with our fellow mediating countries, Egypt and Qatar. I'm not going to try to hammer through that in public, but we're going to continue to have these negotiations because we believe getting a ceasefire and finding a way to bridge these divides is in the interest of Israel, just as we believe it's manifestly in the interest of the Palestinian people and the broader region. And when do you expect higher level negotiations or in-person negotiations to uh, get I don't want to put again. a timetable on it. We want to get this proposal developed uh, as soon as possible and get it over to, to Israel and Hamas and then try to get uh, a final agreement. Netanyahu also said he would not change his policies to minimize civilian casualties. This flies directly in the face of your continued calls for him to uh, stem those civilian casualties. So how do you intend to hold him accountable to actually stop the civilian casualties. So I want to see that direct quote and see exactly the context of it, uh, that it was in before uh, I respond specifically to it. But I will say we think it is absolutely imperative. It is a moral imperative and it is a security imperative to Israel that they minimize civilian casualties. And um, we have at a number of times uh, through the course of this campaign gone to them with specific recommendations of things that they can do to minimize civilian casualties. And we have seen them implement some of those recommendations to bring down civilian casualties. So there have been times in the past where um, they have uh, implemented specific recommendations that we have made. That said, the number of civilian casualties in Gaza remains far too high, despite these improved measures, uh, which is why we continue to push for a ceasefire.